Hey, Scott. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, Jamie, how are you? I'm good, Andy. How you how you doing over there in your part of the uh, state. hot, hot state of Texas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spring finally ended. It lasted longer than usual, but the uh, last few days, <clears throat> boy, it's, it's hit us pretty good, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, little flooding, Summer. you know, to start the season is always good. Oh, yeah. Probably, not, <laughs> yeah. Snowmageddon's not enough. You got to get a little flooading in there, but uh, That's right. <laughs> now we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Looks like we've got a good crowd and uh, uh, more coming in, I see. This is the Trading Studio. My name is Andy and that's Jamie and Scott. And let's dive in. Thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, just before we get started, I want to go over the disclaimer. Hey, Mike, how are you, buddy? Uh, we are content publishers here at Trade Ideas. Okay, this is for educational purposes only even though at one time uh, Jamie and I both held a Series 7 license and we're brokers, we no longer carry that license. So anything you see or hear today should not be construed as investment advice. Okay, that's, uh, if you are looking for that, uh, you wanna seek out somebody who does hold that uh, license. I mentioned the Series 7 and uh, probably a couple of others. So uh, that'd be a stock broker or a registered advisor. All right. Agenda for today, uh, market recap, uh, kind of a kind of a weird day. So we're going to talk about that. Holly recap, wasn't a weird day for Holly. Holly had a, a, de a really decent day in a, in a kind of a choppy market. So Jamie will definitely highlight uh, some of the trades. Uh, as a matter of fact, I heard today Jamie's been uh, auto trading this uh, for the last couple of weeks and, and doing pretty good. So that's that's definitely encouraging. So. Uh, and then after Jamie finishes up with the AI, uh, I'm going to take over and we're going to take a look at some docking windows. I know you guys um, have probably seen Brad. I'm, I haven't been in there, but I, I'm sure he's been kind of teasing this and uh, it can't help to see some more. So when you do finally get this version, when it's released in beta, and I'm telling you right now that you're probably going to see some bugs on my screen. So we're still working this out. You know, hopefully you guys will have this, you know, in, in a week or so, but I, no promises. Uh, but I'm going to show you how you can kind of create your own docking window or how you can also use the channel channel bar to uh, dock a channel uh, and then rearrange it, do whatever you want to. to, to. So we'll kind of just go through some of the steps doing that. And then price alerts. Boy, it was a not a good uh not a good showing. Maybe the, is this signs of uh, maybe the market's getting a little more difficult? It's definitely been sideways. Tried to break out today, but uh, couldn't do it. So uh, we'll take a look at that and maybe analyze uh, what this might mean. I don't know. All right. Before we dive in, though, I do want to cover our five-star support education. We constantly have new people in here every uh, uh, webinar, so it's important for us to go over this because we do provide expert uh, five-star support education and training uh, you can see over there and the traders room uh, Barry does a really uh, great job of not only trading but also helping those out who may be struggling with the software and need some ideas about a configuration or something or sharing his windows uh, he's very helpful he definitely encourage he tells us all the time hey if somebody has a question send them in I'll show them so that's a great uh, place to get further education and training. And of course, you see the webinars along the left side there. Uh, I'm not going to read off the names like I do sometimes, but uh, you can read them there. And uh, the only different one is probably the Q&A, which is uh, moderated by our Dan Merkin and Brad Williams. That's our CEO and our CTO. So a uh, great place to go to find you know new things coming around the corner and also a great Q&A venue. So be sure to uh, attend, attend that if you can. And the support webinar down at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, where you want to come for more in-depth question and answering Q&A. So this is every day, Monday through Friday. I'll be heading up the one tomorrow at 12 Eastern time. Okay, and uh, it's what we do is we still Barry's live stream for an hour and you guys come in and we talk about the software if you have any questions and hey, we're all long time, time traders. So if there's no questions about the software, we also, you know, ask, you know, if you want us to look at any charts for you or talk about uh, anything you want to, but we prefer to handle all the questions regarding the software is our priority. So best place to go. Now let me back out here and 
save the next slide for Scott. And let's pull up the, uh, and you're gonna see some of my, my columns kind of scrunched up. That's an issue we're having. So I'm waiting for the next dev version to come in. I actually fixed some of them by removing, I had to actually remove some columns, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a bug right now we got to get rid of. So let me see if I can pull up the spies here. Let me go ahead and launch my Epic pen. Sorry, I'm not on the ball. Oh my gosh, I hit on the channel. All right, that's okay. We can get back. Oopsie. Oopsie daisy, yeah. Now you'll probably see it all squint. Uh, I'm not sure if I saved it. But yeah, I got I got some clouds back there behind it. Let me go ahead and pull this up while that's get over here so I don't double click on a channel as well. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. And yeah, you can see some of my columns are definitely jacked. All right, so here's the spies, and I guess we did uh, eventually kind of close on a high there. I mean, we we looked like we were going to burst through it this morning, pulled back, and technically, Jamie, I just I just now noticing this, but uh, we did close at an all-time high. You can tell I don't listen to any news outlets or anything like that, but I that would definitely be a new all-time high. And the spies, I don't know if the indices actually close the same. Uh, should should have, but sometimes they can be off by a few points. Uh, so there you have it. Not a whole lot of volume, not an explosive move through highs like you would hope if you're bullish. Um, I noticed the IWM did not participate at all today. As a matter of fact, if you look at the spies up about a half percent and you look at the IWM and it was boy nothing like what you see there in the spies so so keep an eye on that i mean it's funny the iwm was kind of leading the way for the last couple of days going into yesterday and then there's been definitely some selling going off uh, going on in there so uh kind of wonky let's take a look at the cues see what's see what's up there boy yeah i gotta close some stuff when you do holly there's some this is uh, lagging you always, uh, this is a brand new dev version. They just gave it to me yesterday. So uh, there's there may be some bugs here and there. So we'll work it out. So the queues, a great day, but uh, they're still a little bit of ways, not, not an all-time high for them. So we'll see what happens. But definitely a good day, strongest up over 1%. So uh, that's the nature of this market, guys. You know, you could be in a lot of small caps today and you're scratching your head going, how did I lose money? You know, the, you know, the market closes at all time highs and I, I, you know, I had a bad day. How does that happen? Well, it's just the rotation we have. You know, the solars were hot today. You can see down here in my sector analysis, the gold mining stocks were uh, hot. IBB healthcare and some semis and if you weren't in those you might have struggled a bit but uh nonetheless still very bullish in, in, on all accounts basically in every one of these uh, major uh, symbols here uh, indexes so nothing really to write home about but just not after flirting all you know for a month trying to get up to this level and you poke through you wish it would have been a little more enthusiasm uh, like i said no relative you know no relative volume at all. It was actually below one. So not doesn't necessarily mean anything. Price is the only thing that pays, but uh, you would like to see uh, back in the good old days, a nice little explosive move through that, through that breakout there. But Jamie, uh, I didn't even have to use my Epic pen, uh, but uh, because really there's not a whole lot to mark up here. We're just kind oh, of yeah. uh, loading right above that 10 period moving average. I can pull it up now and show you guys this has been closing above it now for several weeks uh so maybe if we could close below it we can see some selling you know odds are we're going to move higher but hey it's 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 very into summertime now and it hasn't been and i got a tesla alert going off not sure what that's doing that had to be a bad tick probably 
and yeah, I'm not seeing that. I got alert set up here for a short if it ever gets up there. But anyway, Jamie, uh, you got anything you want to add to the uh, the overall uh, market recap here? Not really. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, just that little blurb up above mm -hmm. to new highs. So definitely no bear case currently. Mm -hmm. um, nope. And we all know, well, it's Friday. Can't say we know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I got a pretty good feel of what might happen, but I could be wrong <laughs> as well. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But, uh, you know, got a little wick on the top, a little wick on the bottom. Who knows? I mean, it, it's just kind of anything goes at this point. Until yeah. we see the first 15 minutes tomorrow, uh, not really any point in speculating, you know, just getting there and uh, go with the flow. Yeah, uh, uh, Chris, one of our uh, traders who joined us uh, about, you know, I don't know, seven, eight months ago, uh, he made a good comment. He goes, boy, there's, you know, after this uh, CPI report, there's not a lot of stuff that can take us down, you know. I said, well, it's a, that's a good point, you know, the market seems like it wants to just bleed higher, but at the same time, you know, uh, I guess we'll have earnings seasons coming up, coming up in not too long. So uh, True. I guess I that'll see, be the next see, catalyst. I see Gregory's uh, question there. He's like, what does that mean? What do you think will happen tomorrow? And Gregory, I'm just kind of being <laughs> facetious because mm -hmm. when we've seen days like this, popping the all-time high, and then Fridays tend to be a little bit of, uh, you know, window dressing. Um, not to say that we couldn't go down tomorrow, um, but it, it just kind of feels like, you know, we might go up there and pop a new little high tomorrow and, you know, have a calm close. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong, right? You know, uh, preconceived notions aren't real good things to have in the trading world. No, no. We just Not at all. trade uh, what happens, you know. But just a little uh, little old timer here uh, thinking about what might happen tomorrow. So, but the bottom line is, hey, if it's a, if it's a down day, I'm ready to go short. It's a long day or what I perceive to be a long day. I'm ready to go long or anything in between. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I read a couple of good articles last night and one was on inflation. And it, it's, it's, it's such a tight rope that they're walking right now because we are seeing inflation. And, you know, of course, they're using the term transitory, which very well could be the case. Uh, but uh, it's 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 not l little inflation. Okay, we're setting records the last two months in in these increases that we're seeing in the CPI, and of course a lot of people riding off because of the pandemic and things like that. But there is a lot of pent up demand. Uh, you're seeing it out there. People are buying up assets, and and you know equities are risk assets that people are buying up. So uh, uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's 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 going to come down to, you know, if they can allow a certain amount of inflation without getting too overheated because, uh, you know, you, the tightrope is you walk that tightrope and you know, one side you, you fall and you got inflation, the other one deflation. So they got a, they got a tough job ahead of them and I, I wouldn't want to be in their position because uh, I just don't know how you can just keep printing and, and, and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. But so far, there hadn't been any stop to it. But all right, Jamie, that's enough of that. We're just, got we're, that right, Andy. we're just technical analysis guys, man. We don't, we don't try to pay, play, pay too much to fundamentals. And so cool. I don't know. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you I wish it? the no. formula was that simple. Hey, this company has good earnings. It yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, <laughs> we, we all know how that goes, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, okay. So how about I grab it, Andy? We'll go over the Holly okay. trades real quick here. Sure. Hey, and to your question there, Gregory, uh, he's asking about AMC, GME, and some of the other MIMI stocks. Well, not really my bag, but I was surprised, Andy, to hear Barry talk about how he had a starter position in AMC today based on, you know, coming down to this little level right here. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> but, I mean, whether it's AMC... Or excuse me, I'm on the wrong stock. He was talking about GME. GME, right. But if right. you'll notice <clears throat> how similar these charts look, the line is right there where I left it on AMC, uh -huh. right? Yep. So they pretty much go in tandem, not to say that they always do, but pretty much. Um, so, you know, if you haven't been going into the trading room, uh, Gregory, that might be a good place if Barry's yeah. starting to, uh, to get in there and trade those things. Uh, he'd be a great guide for you. 
And not only him, there will be a lot of other ones in there that are watching those like a hawk for sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, before we get going here, blah, 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 think or swim, every short is HTV notation. Yeah, George, um, I've got a tasty trade account. Uh, you're talking about thinkorswim, right? Uh, I've also, as Andy was saying earlier, been uh, putting the AI through its auto paces. This is the second week now in the E-Trade environment. And yes, run into a lot of hard to borrows over there. Um, it's it's quite annoying and uh, I don't really know any way around it at this point. Um, it's just one of those things that we all have to deal with. And, you know, sometimes when you don't get the fill, it helps. Sometimes when you don't get the fill, it hurts. Yeah. Um, it's one of the unknown variables right now. It really is, you know, um, yeah, best laid that. plans and, and statistical analysis and everything, you know, uh, all the things that we do to try to enhance our trading systems. Um, but then, hey, it's the luck of the draw. Can you even get the fill or not? Um, so unfortunately, that's just one of the unknown factors that we all have to deal with at this point. Yeah, IB has a pretty good short book. They, yeah, they and of course it's it's, it's the double-edged sword. Hey, no commission at E-Trade. Yeah. <laughs> or you can pay commissions over there and maybe get your shorts, right? So right. we, you know, and of course we know the power of not paying fees, right? So it's like which is better, you know, missing some fills from time to time or not paying the commission. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time and data to figure that out, you know. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, onward through the fog here. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to extend the Holly AI blotter so we can see all the trades. What a nice, what a nice blotter. If it could only be like this every day, right? Sure, you're going to have your losers, but a lot more green on the screen. All right. So typically, what we like to talk about here. Uh, is there any spread between conservative and moderate, and how could we have potentially captured some of that? We got some good examples today. Uh, so, okay. And speaking of the shortlist issue, first trade out of the shoot this morning, CLOV, hard to borrow, sorry, no soup for you. Okay. So that's how the day started. CLOV was the first one out. E trade, it was not shortable. Maybe it was shortable at other places, but it was a beautiful trade as we can see right up here coming just about six minutes into the open holly generating short signal right there at 1739 and does exactly what a trade what we would hope a trade would do just immediate gratification um, which is always nice never really having to sweat it out um, seller in control for the first 45 minutes then we get this consolidation action um, so plenty of time to pick your exit now the shaded area here that's the border right there. Here's where Holly closed the trade and didn't do too shabby. Uh, well, actually, target hit. Actually, the target hit was right here. That's why you're seeing the uh, shaded area in there. And not a bad exit. Could have got a little bit more, another, what, 38 bucks there holding to the close. Um, but would have had to sit a little bit of a wiggle, which is not much fun uh, to get that extra 40 bucks or so. Um, so not the biggest spread there, but spread nonetheless and a beautiful trade by Holly. Now, of course, these are the classic ones. Notice the exit reason, all right? Profit save, profit save, and both of these guys here. Um, Iova, just a beautiful long and some other attributes behind this trade as well. We can see the original buy signal coming in right here, 21.59. And what? what Let's see, Iova came, that was about 15 minutes into the close, or excuse me, the open. Um, what I really liked about this one, get into the money a little bit, start watching it. What do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. We had about uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes of nice consolidation, sideways movement. And when we start to see this unfold, my eyes go right here. Hey, if we break that level, We've got the potentiality for a secondary pattern to emerge on top of the statistical viability that Holly's delivered to us. Acting nice, setting up, you know, this little consolidation area only to have it pop right there. Now, Holly got out, in my opinion, at the absolute worst time, okay? Um, flatted the trade on this little wick down, probably, you know, the little algorithm there, which is kind of a modified trailing stop, was like, hey, it's going sideways, it's not going up, better close it out, 
she closes it out for a flat. But based on us being humans and seeing that secondary pattern potentiality, all you had to do was hold it, and this would have been a great place to add to that position um, once that secondary pattern emerges. And we also had not just screaming volume, but enough volume to get the job done. Uh, Iova closing about 43% above average on the relative scale. Um, so just a very clean trade. Secondary pattern emerge, decent volume, what I like to term a three-star trade. Um, so you could have really leveraged that one as well. Iova just straight up like a good stock should. A little bit of a pullback uh, at the close there. But you can see my B plus exits. I had three of them, one, two, and three. And uh, just a beautiful, clean trade with plenty of room and an ability to leverage the trade as well. All right, got a little bit of a spread here in ERJ. Not really any opportunity here to add to the position, um, like what we saw on IOVA just now. Looked like it might do it, but just never could get enough oomph. But the bottom line is we got the entry here, 1539. Holly closes it once again for a flat. You know, this is pretty tame behavior. Not a lot to get worried about. It's not like we ever got down into this area and it acted like it was going to stop us out. Just had to be patient with this one. And had we done that and held to the close, you know, risking 100, a little over 1R on ERJ, which is a nice, well behaved day trade into the close there. All right, let's see what else we got here. MVIS. Okay, this looks very similar to the SIG trade, which not a lot of room to add to these, but it's the, uh, you know, check this out, topping formation on SIG right here, and then bond shorty on the MVIS. Very similar patterns, but different strategies, okay? So the SIG, just a well-behaved short. We shorted here, a little bit of a flux right here, and just boom, down. Uh, as we hoped it would. Now, this one was interesting because I was thinking to myself when I was in this trade, I'm like, all right, more than likely, I'd be surprised if we, you know, got into this area here. Of course, it did wick down, but my eyes immediately went to this level here, okay? Gap up, seller took control, or excuse me, buyers took control in the first 30 minutes, ran it up nice and frothy, and then that's when the AI comes in and shorts it. So, you know, when you're trying to figure out, okay, how much room do we have? My eyes went to this level here, and sure enough, that was a great place to uh, to cover a little bit as well. Um, MVIS, very similar pattern. You know, not a lot of room to add to anything here. Never did set up in that capacity. Gato, um, just the exact opposite, all right? Just a trade that worked right out of the chute. Not a lot of time, not, you know, no setup for a secondary entry, um, but just a nice grinder uh, to the top here. Peeled off a little bit as we lost the 15, uh, or excuse me, the 10 period moving average right here. It's always a good indicator. Once you see that close below or once you see that candle dipping below, it's always a good uh, potentiality for an exit uh, on these longs. So even though Holly kind of blew it out of the water today, Still not a lot of spread to be had between uh, conservative and moderate, unless it is a profit save, because as we've talked about in the past, we used to see the timed holds leave some spread in there as well. Uh, but since we've retooled the AI to be pretty much all day holds, all exiting between 50 and 30 minutes to 45, or excuse me, 15, 15, 10, and 20 minutes before the open, we don't see a whole lot of timed exits leave the money on the table anymore. So that's about it for add-ons and conservative versus moderate spread. And we did have a good example of a trade around, which typically we reserve that for plays that have been stopped out. And how did they act around the stop area? Well, Wish is a classic example of a trade around today because the AI brings out the short right here where you can see the purple arrow at the price of 1088. And this one did not behave well. As soon as we got into it, following 15 minute candle, wham, slammed us out for a stop. But check out how the stock reacted up here. Did it just go careening through that level? Nope, it did not. 
So this is a classic case of the stop area acting more or less as a pivot. Once we see these two bars here and we get down in, you know, to this area here uh, while this bar was still active, gives us a great opportunity to put a short on now, okay? Get a better price than the AI, take a smaller risk just outside of these candles here in hopes that, you know, this turns into more or less a second mouse gets the cheese type of trade, um, which fits the bill perfectly here. Had you done that, could have enjoyed a nice move, getting a better price in the AI around 1151 with potentiality all the way down to 1020. So about a buck 30 of potential in there. And we had some other ones too, just not quite as good. Hems was a short as well. And you can see, sell way down here, boom. Perfectly ticks and wicks up to that stop area. And we basically get the same type of action as we did with the wish, okay? So if you got stopped out, that's unfortunate. Or if you just saw the AI get stopped out, come back up here, start noticing how it's reacting around the uh, stop area, acting as a backstop or pivot point. Opportunity to short, get a better price in the AI, around 13.12 with potentiality not near as big, about 60 cents or so. But as you can see here, you know, the bigger the aggressive profit, the more potential there would have been on a trade around. So at least one decent example of a trade around in Wish, Hems fits the bill, just not near as much of a move as we got out of the Wish there. And Andy, unless there's something else you want to go over there, I think that's just about it. But a pretty stellar performance, all in all, yes, from AI yes, today. Good day. Yeah. Can you answer uh, Alessandro's question about uh, uh, moderate versus aggressive? I mean, uh, oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Could you recap the difference between conservative and moderate and aggressive mode? Sure. Um, just pointing these columns out here: conservative, moderate, and aggressive. All right. Now, when we're operating in conservative mode, there are five reasons why the AI will exit. Profit target is hit, stop loss is hit, or the timed hold expires. And of course, we don't really have to worry about the timed hold expiring intraday anymore or until the very uh, last part of the close. Um, and then we also have profit save and reduce risk, okay? Those are the audibles that the AI can call, get out of a winner or a loser early, okay? So once again, profit target, stop loss, timed hold, profit save or reduce risk. And of course, it's always gonna tell you over here why the exit occurred in conservative mode. Now, the difference between conservative and moderate, in moderate mode, the stop loss is used, okay? There are no profit targets, profit saves, or reduced risks. So either, either it holds or you get stopped out. If you don't get stopped out, you hold the duration, okay? Um, aggressive is just, we're tracking the positions and showing you what happens if you don't use any risk management, okay? So no stop losses, nothing is in play with aggressive. It's just meant to be there to show you, well, this is what happens if you take all the trades or any trade and use no stop loss or any type of risk management, okay? Um, so those are the difference between the three. And I hope that clarifies it for you. Okay, it sounds like it does. All right, uh, how do you decide on which risk to, well, uh, Shante, that's just something that you're going to have to, uh, we, can, we can tell you this, what our back office shows, and this is kind of what Jamie's doing, moderate profit by far outperforms conservative profit. We don't really look at aggressive. Aggressive is a very dangerous, you know, to, to trade without a stop is very dangerous. So we only focus on conservative and moderate. We don't even give you the option in our brokerage plus to use aggressive. So, but moderate and, and it's, it's logical. It's like the best day traders are ones that will hold trades all day, not look to take, you know, 15, 20 cents out of a trade. Uh, so over the long run, moderate uh, profit is, is definitely more profitable, but there's days where it's really sloppy or, you know, big directional move where uh, conservative can outperform for sure. Yes, exactly uh, what Andy said there, Shanta. And what you're looking at right here, this is just the AI trades panel and trade ideas. What you're looking at right here is the signal window, okay? So technically, this is not a live account that you're looking at right here. These are just all the signals and how they performed for the day. 
Now, having said that, as Andy said earlier, I have been running the AI in automation mode for the past couple of weeks, and it's pretty eye-opening. It takes a little getting used to, um, especially if you're not used to being in a lot of positions simultaneously. Um, but to your question about how do you know which risk mode is going to, you know, how do you know which one to pick? Well, you don't really, okay? Um, I'm running mine, my live trades in moderate mode. And if I feel the, you know, the market's not gonna be as conducive for follow through based on some of the opening metrics that I'm that I'm watching. Um, for example, uh, I watch a compare account window, which sometimes after the first 15 minutes, if these biases are really large, meaning greater than 55% one way or the other, that can give me a little bit of a bead on what the market might do. So I'm also watching for correlations between what I'm seeing in my compare account windows after the first 15 minutes and based on the readings, were they, was there a strong bias? Was it a so-so bias? Based on those readings, what mode did the AI perform best in that day? Of course, that's gonna take many, many weeks of collecting data to see if there are any, you know, concrete correlations there. There might be and there might not be. We can't just use a few days uh, to figure that out. Um, but that's a very good question. And the answer as it sits right now is we never know which risk mode is going to perform the best, right? All right, Jamie, thank you. I better get going here so you can uh, talk about yeah. a little bit about docking. I appreciate it. Good job. Sure. Uh, all right, guys. So yeah, I'm sure I'm sure some of you guys, maybe from Michael or Brad, have seen uh, our docking feature that'll be coming out soon uh, to a software near you. Hopefully, hopefully in the next week or two. Uh, well, I would really be surprised if it was longer than two weeks. But like I said, there's bugs in it. We're working out. This is a this is a huge feature. Okay, so we, we're just working with the dev version right now, and uh, it's going to be really cool. And for some, I'm sure some of you guys haven't seen it. But you may be asking, why would you use a, a docking window? Well, a lot of people like to be able to grab their whole layout and maybe just move it over to another monitor. These are all free floating windows. If you want to do that, you basically have to do them one at a time. Uh, whereas you, if you dock everything in, inside one window, you'll be able to basically put it on every, any monitor that you want to. Also, you might want to have uh some uh windows set up that you don't want on your main screen all the time okay but you want it uh you know running in the uh uh maybe down in the taskbar that you can really go to really quick and pull it up pull up that dock have it underneath your layout or whatever but uh so it's going to be a really i mean people are really excited about this and i am too but let me just give you a quick kind of rundown uh you're going to be able to go to new tab okay and lot and just launch a new docking window Okay, and we'll just call this Trade Ideas Pro Doc. You can change that name if you like. You can make it whatever size you want to, and you can resize it after you have your windows in there. Okay, when you resize it, the windows are just going to adjust for you. And let me just give you a quick rundown. Let's say you want to build something with maybe just two or three of your favorite alerts that are on your uh, main layout. You just want to focus on these. You got too much stuff you're looking at. You want to build something. I can come to a chart here, right click, duplicate into Trade Ideas Doc. There it is. I can come over here to my 15 minute chart, duplicate into Trade Ideas Pro Doc. Got that. Maybe I want this extreme volume high low pro in there, one of my favorite. Same thing. Uh, maybe I also want Extreme Master Blaster. Let's bring it in there as well. Okay, so I got four windows right now. Uh, maybe that's all I needed. Maybe all I needed was four windows and uh, my, two of my, I mean, two uh, charts and two of my favorite windows. So then you can just start building it. You can drag it to where you want to. Let's say you want the charts over here in the, come on now, other portion. And let's say you want the this 15 minute chart right below that okay and I don't know why it's not taking up the whole chart but that's okay stream volume high low pro let's bring this over here there we go master blaster will put this right under what you got to do is just drag it to wherever you want to position it I could position it right below it there 
now I have two windows and alerts going off. Now let's see if I can get this right here. Boom, there. Now let's do this. See, it's just a work in process. And before you know it, you've built yourself a nice little dock. Just remember when you drag, you just put it where you want it. And so let's say I have this window up here. I can put this right there. And I know it's going to go right above my Extreme Master Blaster. So really cool. Now I want to, if this is too big, I can resize it. Watch everything will resize perfectly. Let's say I want my charts bigger because you can just pull it that way, pull it that way. And let's say it's too tall. You can bring it down. See, everything just resizes for you inside the dock. So there you have it. I got me a couple of good you know, charts, 15 minute daily and two of my favorite alerts. Um, you know, maybe I just want to focus on that for the day. You know, I have a nice little dock I can look at. All right. Now, we also have what's called, I'm moving kind of fast because I do want to get to the uh, price alerts, uh, but this is pretty cool. Check this out. You can go to new and we have the new docked channel bar now. Okay. So this is going to bring up the whole channel bar inside a docking window. You remember how in the past, if you wanted to like go see a channel, you're like, oh, great. I got to close out of my default layout because I have to go into this one of these channels. Well, you no longer will have to do that. You can just pull up the new uh, channel docking window. Let's say I want to look at Wall Street bets. Okay. I just pulled this up and it pulled up and it's going slow. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Now I have a docking window of the, the Wall Street bets channel. And I still have my default layout, so I can put this on another monitor if I want to. Got to be careful, guys, how much you're using, okay? That's that's the thing I'm fearing right now is because you are, if, when you start running a lot of docs, you're going to be using more bandwidth if you're using a lot, whole lot of charts and top, and top list. But let's say you pull up a channel like this and you're saying, you know what? I like this, but I don't need all this clutter. It's too cluttered for me, okay? I want to make something simpler which by the way, I'm in charge. They put me in charge of basically rebuilding all the channels into docking windows because uh, uh, they just wanted me to, to do something, I guess. <laughs> but, but anyway, let's say you got this and you're like, uh, you know what, I, this is too busy for me. I don't need all this stuff. I, I just need my three windows, maybe a couple of charts. Well, you can just start closing things. Boom, and you'll watch everything kind of resize, boom. Let's say you want to bring this window and you want to have these windows in the center of everything. Come on now. Okay, I could put that right there. I could close this one out since I already got another single stock window right there. I don't really care about looking at the news. I'm a, going to trade off of technical analysis. And now I can move this under this window. Boom, there you have it. You can resize inside the window. Let's say I don't need all these charts. Okay, these right here are set. They're not uh, they're not linked. Okay, they're set to AMC and GME, which is it's just cool. Let's say you want to keep an eye on GME and AMC because man, when they get going, you can make a lot of money. But I don't need all these other stuff. You know, maybe I want a chart. I want charts that are linked like these are. OK, they're linked to my windows here, so I don't need a five minute, a daily. I just need to keep track of the 15 minute chart, let's say, of. of let's get this over here. OK, you're being stubborn here. Hold on. Boom. And let's go this right here. Boom. And we'll stick this one. Well, let's see. Let's put these on. I was leaving on five minutes. You guys will get the idea here. Uh, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to show you. If you clear out this, watch how everything will move over for you. Boom. And then you can slide this over. Okay. And we could bring this over here like this. Another chart. And link this one. So I'm just kind of working through 
uh, everything that we could do here. So now we got these two charts. This is a five minute and 15 minute. Let's put one on a daily time frame, and we're gonna put it on a daily. And I don't say you don't like that white background. Go to properties and you can take off the dark theme and do the same thing for this. Okay, these windows should be linked now. So now you've made a real simple uh, layout. Let's say you want to get rid of this channel bar. Don't just X out with the, of the channel bar because remember, this is a channel bar docking window. So what you got to do is drag it down here, okay, and then close it out. I think that should work, yeah. So look at there. You got uh, some nice little five-minute charts of AMC, and now you got these linked to your your windows here and once again guys pay no attention to the wonky uh, uh, columns there right there are just kind of jacked right now Let's see if I can get it over there there you go so you just built you you took that window that you thought was maybe a little bit too messy and you just made you something very simple where you can keep track of all the meme stocks with a nice little chart over here with GME and AMC so you can track those and these will be linked to anything that you want to so you can trade what's hot at the time or what's not at the time so anyway Jamie is, do I have any questions in there that I need to talk about I need to an answer out loud that lose Jamie Hey, sorry, Andy. I just realized oh. I was talking uh, with mute on. Um, oh. Yeah, we were caught up. A couple more flooded in there. But George's question, I don't know if you addressed it with that linking. Uh, I don't know if George was talking about linking charts to another platform or within TI. Right. Well, yes, we, we're going to be adding that feature. Right now, if you click on anything, it's going to be changing the ones in your uh float window as well but we are going to be changing where you can only you only you can set it up to where it only changes inside your dock and vice versa if you change outside your dock it will not change inside that is going to be a feature that will be added so you can basically uh yeah all the traders kind of pounded the table on that said no we need to you know we need something that when you click inside the dock it's not going to change on your uh, on your other one but keep in mind, guys, you, when you do get this and start playing around with it, don't have a bunch of docs open all over the place because I guarantee you if you do and, and make sure your top list uh, have a limited number, you might want to limit them to 50. Uh, your, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you go to uh, time frame set record count, you might want to limit this to 50 if you're running several top lists. Uh, Definitely don't go over 100 because you will start getting some slowdown in your system. Too much bandwidth trying to come through. So that's that, guys. And what you'll be able to do, it's it's hard to do now because we just added the feature. There's a bug in it, but you can go in here, right click anywhere in here, and you can go to save and share to cloud, and it will save your channel to the cloud. You can share it with other people. But I can't do this right now, obviously, because there's a bug and we are getting it worked out. But very cool stuff, man. I mean, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, create some docs and save them into your cloud and pull them up when you want to without affecting your default layout. Uh, yes, but you have, uh, Alessandro, you have to uh, save your layout. Anytime you draw like uh, support resistance or trend lines or anything like that, you need to save your layout, okay? They will save for the for the day, I believe. If you leave a symbol and come back to it, they'll be in there. But if you, if you close out, exit out the program, and when you log back in again, they'll be gone if you don't save your layout. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm calling the main layout is the default. Yeah. 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 Your main layout. These are docking windows. Now you can put your default layout inside a docking window and save that as your default layout for sure. Uh, so there's going to be uh, quite a 
few possible, a lot of possibilities you're going to be able to do with this. And I'm still learning, you know, but uh, it, it's really, it's really fun to work with and see and see what you can do. And I love the fact that, uh, man, you can, you can, you know, squeeze these in and it automatically kind of just brings everything in for you, you know, tighten up these windows, make them smaller for you. That's just really, really cool feature. So uh, it's going to be a lot of possibilities with this. All right, guys, that's it for that. Uh, yes, good point, George. Flexibility and choice contributions to free-flowing thinking and success. Very, very well said. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to close this, guys. There's no sharing or anything like this because you don't have access to it, and you're going to want to do your own stuff anyway. So let's do this. Let's dive into the price alerts. And Jamie hit me up about an hour before the close, and he said, "Man." You know, the price alerts, uh, they didn't do too well. Let me add my created column. See, even my price alerts window is jacked. This new, uh, yeah. Well, let me, uh, let me do this. Let me take out company name. Yeah, you got to do some crazy stuff here to get everything like you want it. There we go. Got a symbol now anyway. So let's go to created and let's look at how you guys did. And while we're doing this, you guys get ready, have a symbol in mind because there's been some great calls lately. And when I see good traders like we have in this room, uh, that when their calls start to not be so good, uh, I, I, I scratch my head because a lot of times this could be maybe looking at some underlying you know weakness in the in the overall market but and, and it could lead to maybe maybe we're going to see a sell off so i mean look at look at this guys our best performer was jamie wait wait this first solar is probably no that's not in there that's right was oracle with a 0.78 okay so 0.78% yeah, 0.78%. So we did not have a good a good week, guys. And there was about uh, not a big showing. Last I only had about eight last week, but uh, still, out of eight people, our best uh, performer was Slava with uh, Oracle. Yeah, and I think it was, it's a uh, point. I'm showing 0.96%. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. With that said, he had some nice gains in it for sure. But wow, did they have earnings or something? No, it's not till June 15th. So I'm not sure what was going on with Oracle today, but they, they sold off. So you did have some better gains in there at one time, but still let's, uh, let's erase these. They're ugly. And then we'll uh, put something, I shouldn't say ugly. I mean, but uh, let's delete these and let's start again, guys. And I tell you what I'm going to do. Now I got some set. All right, so here's the thing, guys. Uh, anybody who's new in here, okay, give me a symbol and give me a price, and I will assume it's going to be a long trade. Uh, if it, if you do want a short, let me know. Just call it a call it a short when you put it in, and we'll make sure it gets done as a short. And the first one out there is Slava with HSY. And the price is 174.67. All right. It's a lot at 174.67, and it's in there. And we got OCGN. OCGN. I guess we okay, need a price. I, yeah, I need a price on OCGN. Uh, so can you give me a price on OCGN. Seven twenty-five. All right. So he's looking for a bounce in this thing. And that is neat. Okay, wish long, uh, Peter. I need a price on w, w I uh, wish C G E N C G E N at 840 from Paul. Okay, I see what he's looking at there. Nice little breakout there on the daily possibility. Okay. 
All right, I like that, Paul. Uh, Cat at 229 long. Cat was selling off today. And he wants to look for a reversal at 229. And that is from Randall. All right, and we got FLXN. That was some nice orderly selling in CAT today, Andy. Yeah, there was. 9.36. You know, the, the home builders have been kind of selling off and uh, notice deer and CAT. So maybe, uh, maybe some of these materials are getting too expensive out there and we're seeing uh, going to see a slowdown well we'll see a lot of a lot of things can happen flxn aja at 936 all righty i see what he's going here yeah the supply chain issues are starting to pop up everywhere now oh yeah so yes they are interesting yeah all right let's see here AMC short from 44. Okay. Short. So he's looking for a bounce up and he wants to short it. Okay. I like that. I'm going to make sure I set it right. We're going to go short. And that was, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Manit. It's a, we can only have one per person. Uh, so right now you, you're on another one. Okay, sorry about that. XOP from Martin, 9930. All righty. Whoa, keyboard went crazy there. Uh, Wendy's from George, 28. Okay, for 28. And that is George Young. Uh, S-T-O-R, got a lot of participants today, Jamie. Uh, short. Let's see. Wait a minute. Sonia, you got six thirty-six fifty-three short at forty. I'm not. Uh, oh, you're just giving me the price. So you want to look for a bounce up and to short it, or do you want me to? Because it's at twenty-three right now. So I can. Okay. All right. We'll do that. that that's the kind of what. That's the way to do it. Fade those things, huh? Uh, create price alert. At 40, and we're going to go short, and that is Sonia. Real at 2041. And that is Jim. And Chewy is 78. Chewy on a pullback, it looks like, at 78. Got to make sure this is a long. And this is from, oh man, you guys are coming at me. I can't follow. Hold on. It's okay. Who's that Chewy oh, from? I got a beat on oh, it. Oh, Ben. Ben, okay. A lot of participants, man. I like this. Uh, so next would be Apron from Apron, Betty okay. Sue. Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Apron and Long at 620? Correct. Okay. Uh, George had a question about his Wendy's, I think. Okay, we'll take a look at it, George. And this is Betty Sue. (laughs) 
Uh, there, yeah, right, Michael. All right, let me see. What did uh, let's see? What did he say? Uh, George, let's take a look at it. While I'm digging it up, Jamie, you can maybe read what he said to me. Uh, George Wendy's long at, at 25. Oh, you want long at 25? Okay. There we go. We got it. All right. Looks like Adobe. Yeah. Uh, it's one more. A lot of contestants, man. You, we're taking up the whole hour here. Short at 525. Okay. Ah, I see that maybe. And to Randall and Manit were asking, you know, what's the purpose of the contest? I'm like, well, to see who wins. <laughs> Plus, it's That's just right. entertaining <laughs> and people it seem is. to enjoy it. And also, too, it's going to be interesting to see moving forward how this market operates because mm -hmm. the last weeks to have last weeks all those picks and the best winner and they were all predominantly long the best winner was one percent it's going to be interesting to see if that changes or stays the same because guess what you can pull, you can pull meaningful data from lots of different places sometimes from the places you don't expect exactly Exactly. All right, guys, I did drop all the price alerts inside the chat window, so you guys have access to them. So you can uh, pull them up and see how you fare against your competition. And also you'll get maybe get some great ideas of uh, potential trades. So with that said, guys, it's time to call it a day. I'm going to bring Scott in here and he will walk us out. You guys hang on. He will have a uh, coupon code for you. Yeah, thank you, Andy, Jamie. Uh, on the way out, uh, make sure you grab the Strategy Indicators book if you don't have it yet. It's written by our Software Development Director, who brought you the modules you know as the Odds Maker, Holly the AI, Brokerage Plus, that kind of stuff. So go to trade-ideas.com slash strategy and learn about what his favorite indicators are to use in the Trade Ideas platform. It's got some cloud links for you, too. Uh, you can find our podcast by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast. Go ahead and download our recent episodes. We've got um, some good interviews we've conducted this year. Also, should have some new ones out soon, so stay tuned for that. If you subscribe, you will be ready to pick them up. Sunshine is a code that saves you 15% off your first month or year of trade ideas or an upgrade from standard premium. So go, go ahead and apply that on checkout if you decide to do an upgrade or start a new subscription. And you can find Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot and also look for our Steve Gomez at TCG. Uh, trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle. Uh, so go ahead and like that page and share stuff with your friends. And if you have any questions, shoot it to info at Trade Ideas. It goes into our help desk, gets you the help you need as quickly as possible. And uh, we're going to have this recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. So stay tuned for some information tomorrow via email about how to find it. Thank you, Andy and Jamie. We will do this again next week. Thanks, Scott. I'll see some of you guys tomorrow. Uh, have a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.